Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I am Celtic Templar, and welcome back to another History and Firearms, and today y'all, we're getting into a really good one, that in which a gun I extremely love the most, and in which I love, especially because one, this is one of my favorite firearms of the Cold War, and that is none other than the Israeli Galil. <laughs> That's right, I'm now a proud owner of an Israeli-made Galil type firearm. Uh, this type of firearm actually comes from the James Armory uh, type group, but still, it's still somewhat of a copy of the Galil, but I, I don't know. I, I'm a fan still. And the fact is, I loved the Galil ever since I was very young. I don't know why, I just did. And this Galil I am holding is the ARM Galil. Uh, people would automatically, who don't know different Galils, automatically end up asking, Templar, what's an ARM? What is the difference between a regular Galil and such? Well, I'll get to that very soon. Now, the Galil assault rifle, or battle rifle, or automatic rifle, as some people call it, actually first came out in 1972 and still is somewhat in production, depending on who's making manufacturing these things. Uh, the gun has actually seen a majority of a lot of conflicts, such as in Africa, the Middle East, parts of Asia, and as well even South America, as well as even being seen and used in parts of the Ukrainian conflict today. The designers was one, the Pal a Palestinian known as uh, Yisrael Galil, and as well a Lek Yaakov Lior, and the fact is, these guys Went, came together to create this gun. And the one major reason is, is because during the Six Day War, the Israeli forces found out that they were using an inferior weapon for the area of, well, the Middle East, which is the FNFAL. No, don't get me wrong, I am a fan of the FNFAL, because it's a very great Belgian gun. Problem is, it was not the best gun suited for the Middle East. And which is why the Israeli military wanted a gun that would suit, well, the battles in Galil, which, in other words, that uh, helped out the Israeli forces. So, uh, Galil and uh, Lior decided to create this bad boy. And the fact is, they took it from the AK-47, which the, uh, pretty much a lot of the, uh, well, Islamic nations actually had a lot of AK-47s because they were given to them by the Soviet Union. However, what the... <laughs> Galil and Lior decided to do was fix the gun in a type of way. They took the AK-47, but they mashed it together with the components of an FNFAL. And originally, uh, there were really a lot of things. Now, these were produced from 1972 to 1998. Sadly, no longer in production. They later switched to the uh, Galil Ace, which I'm not a big fan of for major reasons. Now, uh, this type of firearm, its designs are the ARM, like what I'm holding, the AR, which is technically just the same thing as the uh, ARM, only without the bipod uh, attachment, and as which it even has a bayonet lug. This one does not. This makes you know that it's actually an assault run, an assault machine gun. And then there is also the SAR, or short automatic rifle. Now, uh, as I said, this is the ARM, which means Automatic Rifle Machine Gun. The AR model is just like this, only with, which is AR meaning Automatic Rifle. And the fact is, it doesn't have the bipod attachment, but it does have a bayonet lug. Which is why these guns are actually a one in a kind. Now, the SAR, meaning Short Automatic Rifle, means it has a shorter barrel. And the fact is, it's pretty much just the same thing, only with a shorter barrel and without the bayonet attachment, or as well, even without the, uh, well, bipod. Now, the <laughs> weird thing is, this comes in different mass forms. SAR is around uh, 8.27 pounds, the AR is 8.7, and the ARM is 9.6. This, I don't feel any weight to it. I feel extremely light with this weapon. It is perfect for combat use and formation warfare. The lengths vary from 24 to 28 inches. Uh, barrel on the SAR is 13.1 inches, while the AR and ARM is always 18.1. Uh, 
Uh, now, the cartridge in these guns vary depending on uh, the design and the year. For example, when the Galil gun first came out, like this, the ARM and the AAR, the ARM and the AR fired 7.62. However, uh, 7.62 NATO being uh, mainly from the FN FALs. So they took those and put them in the gun. The thing is, though, they switched to 5.56 NATO, not because the cartridge was lighter, but because the United States accidentally sent the wrong cartridge to the nation of Israel. And the fact is, they were, because uh, one, they, Israel was waiting for a huge shipment for M16s. Uh, but the thing is, the M16s never showed up. It was the A, it was actually the 556 that did. So the Israeli military decided, okay, you know what, screw it, let's just fix the barrel system and the cartridge to fire 556 NATO rather than 762, which is hilarious that the Israeli military went above and beyond to fix this gun to fire 556. Now, it's also been known to even fire uh, 30 carbine, like from the M1 carbine, which is weird to say the least. I, which I, I, because whenever I hold this thing, I don't know why. I don't picture this firing anything other than 5.56 or 7.62 NATO. Uh, but its action is a gas operated rotating bolt, just like an AK-47. And as well, the rate of fire is 650 rounds a minute. Muzzle velocity is for the SAR is uh, 900 meters a second, while for the ARM and AR it's 950 meters a second. And pretty much the effective range is somewhere to between three to 500 meters. So this gives us a good explanation of what this badass bad boy. Now, uh, the entirety of this gun is a mix of three firearms all in one. Now I hear many people already saying, Templar, what do you mean by three firearms? This looks this like an AK-47. Well, you're half right about that. But the thing is, I had to put this out here. Many idiots out there don't know anything about this gun, and they accidentally call this the Israeli go uh, AK. Uh, I don't know why. They always call it an Israeli AK. I don't know why. It is the most dumbest thing you can ever call this thing. It's by far one of the weirdest things I've ever heard somebody call it, because... It may look like an AK, but it's not an AK. It's like calling the M14 uh, M1 Garand. See my point? It doesn't make any sense. And the fact is, there are thousands of copycat guns of the AK. One of the biggest that is nearly identical is the Type 56 or Type 54 uh, Chinese-made assault rifle, which... And such has a bayonet attachment lug system with the majority of the SKS and AK-47 combined. Uh, which, a lot of people end up mistaking that for an AK-47. I don't know why, it is really stupid, I don't know. But, yeah. Now, I want to put this out here. This is by far one of my favorite Galils. The reason I love the Galil ARM is kind of obvious. It's an assault rifle machine gun. Which, this is actually what the Israeli military defense wanted. And the fact is, Galil designed this uh, as a squad operation weapon. In other words, this is a light machine gun slash, well, assault rifle. And the fact is, that's how it was originally used. Now, originally, the magazines they had for this were the regular uh, magazines that they would have for a said uh, AR or SAR which would mostly contain at least probably somewhere between uh, 30 to 35 rounds. However, the ARM, by I think it was like two years after this gun was issued, they decided to give it a lot bigger magazine, somewhere between 40, 40 to 45 rounds. Problem is, they found out that was not so good because it didn't work so well with the bipod system. So what they had decided to do was actually take uh, the... RPK uh, 75 round drum magazines and design it for the Galil and it actually worked. In fact, it's actually stated that Galils like this would actually carry uh, at least two of these drum mags, the rest would be regular uh, banana magazines like this, which all in all is just like an RPK. So in other words, the Galil manufacturer, <laughs> Galil and Lior uh, actually designed a gun 
that is both an assault rifle slash battle rifle and also, uh, well, <laughs> assault machine gun, like the Soviet RPK. So the fact is, I love this gun a lot and I am a big fan of it. Now, one major thing I have to put out here about this gun that I do love is not just its look or appearance that uh, makes the AK-47 look like a walk in the park. It's literally, it's the fact that these things are extremely reliable. I have actually seen torture tests on these guns, which I will leave links down below in the description, that apparently you could throw this in mud, you could throw this in sand, water, you name it, and it keeps working. In fact, there is old, there is old footage of what the Galil has actually been known to go through. They is test trials. They have actually put this through the worst of the worst, and that's why I love this bad boy. Now. Uh, one major thing I think people, uh, especially y'all with the left hands or Ian McCullough from In Range can agree with, or Forgotten Weapons can agree with, that this is a uh, uni-handed weapon, meaning I can use this in my left hand or my right hand, which uh, a lot of soldiers from it that were in Israel at the time actually were majority of left-handed. So they needed a gun instead of having the selector switch all the way on the far end like an AK-47. Galil and uh, Lior decided, you know what, let's put the design right here. Literally, that is probably the coolest thing ever. I love that so much because it's so cool. Oh, because that's the electric switch. It saves on time. I think they took that from the M16 or the FNFAL, uh, which, you gotta admit, it was actually a really good idea. Now, one major thing I also want to put out here is also the fact on its rear sights. The rear sights are not like that of an AK-47. In fact, when you normally see an AK-47, it's like somewhere about like up to the front end here. It's all the way back here, just like an FNFAL, which they took. And the fact is, that's what they liked. And this is actually why, because one, you have a flipper sights like this that go from 300 to 500 range. So, yeah. Uh, now, a weird thing is, also I want to put out here, is how do you adjust the sights? You actually have to take off your front sights. That's the only thing I don't like about these. Because, uh, one, you got to actually have a screw system on the inside. Problem is, I don't know what happened with this, because this was bought used. So, uh, I don't know why, but apparently the inner screw system is missing. Lucky for me, the uh, sight is still on there. Problem is, I do need to fix this, so I think I might need to use a uh, needle nose pliers or something to get this a little fixed. But there is another way, I know, but yeah. Uh, but as well, one major thing is also the effect of the cocking hammer. Now, why do I say this? Simple. Take a look at this picture. See something? That's right, the cocking hammer is sticking up. I want to put this out here. This is actually one of the few guns that actually has it like this, and in fact, I think this was the first gun that did that. Now, why is this awesome? Simple. If, because one, for example, with the AK-47, what you had to do in order to cock this thing, you had to actually flip it all the way to the side, which was a problem. What the Israeli military, what Galil decided to do, was the following, which this is, uh, magazine is unloaded, so yeah. What he had to do was the following. The, all you gotta do is have a thing up, now you get a... Like that. That is actually probably the coolest thing I ever. Uh, no, no. Uh, maybe you might say, "Oh, the Templar. This still looks like an AK-47." Uh, yeah, I know it looks like an AK-47, but the only thing AK about it is the internal components. Now we'll get to that very soon. Now another thing I want to put out here is also the bipod system, which is really cool. The Israeli military wanted a bipod system like that of the FNFAL or like on their Israeli Warhammer FNFALs, so they decided to put this thing on here. However, what they decided to do was actually a little more cooler. They actually added wire cutters. In fact, here is your wire cutter formation system, we're right there, you just cut the wire. This is why I love this gun, it is too far a cool of a gun. Oh, uh, but another thing they took during a time when they had the FNFAL was one major thing. 
That would be the fact that they kept opening up the uh, their the bottles of. <laughs> they actually took the magazines of their FN FALs, and what they were using, what they were doing, they were using them to open up the bottles of beer or such. <laughs> their magazine, which caused them to be malfunctioned, and they had to be send them back. What Galil and uh, Lior decided, you know what? We're not going to have some idiots do this. Let's just put the bottle opener on the gun. And sure enough, it is right here. This is actually the really cool thing. Now, it's a, it's on either side, so you could easily just boop, like that. Now, uh, we didn't do it in the video. We have no video on it because one, I don't want to damage the gun. I don't want the carbonation to damage it. That's what I love. I love that design. But the most thing is one, this is this the most coolest gun out there. The fact is, this is a this is the support weapon. So in other words, this is like a light machine gun. Another thing I also want to add is the said buttstock. It's a folding buttstock from the paratrooper design FNFAL. So they actually took that from that gun and put it on here, which I so do love. Oh, this is actually the most coolest thing I love about that. Also, another thing is one major thing also that they took from the FNFAL, and that is a mag release. The mag release has an extended outward towards the side, which means I can use my index finger or my middle finger, which this is actually what I find hilarious. In the Israeli military, what they would do is the following uh, type of situation, which you see me doing a little run gun video. They would actually immediately take the magazine, like literally, they would stick the gun up like so. And what they would do, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm told, uh, which as I said, guns on safe. So yeah, and this is there's no ammunition in this. Uh, what they would actually do is they would still have their index finger in, and they well they have their Metal finger sticking out and put it in with the, and it's just a big uh, flipping off the bird to the uh, said enemy. Which this is funny because one, it wasn't just the Israeli military doing this, but this was every military that bought these guns. <laughs> the funniest thing ever is the fact that that design got out there to do it like that, which is the most stupidest thing I have ever heard, which is hilarious. So yeah, it's like a big F you to somebody, which, uh, as I said, there's no ammunition or whatever in this, but it, the majority of times when they're firing off their gun, they're always having their finger sticking out like this. This is why it's been nicknamed the birdie rifle, or the birdie gun. Which, <laughs> Giving them the bird. Oh, I love this gun so much because of that. Uh, but yeah, this gun, it is a proven battle rifle slash uh, machine gun. Now, as I said, this is a semi-automatic, so yeah. Uh, now, one major thing also into this form is the fact that the ARM and the SAR were the most highly bought guns of Galil. Uh, why, you might ask? Simple, because one, this is like a machine gun, and the SAR is pretty much a carbine variation of this firearm, and of which has actually been used by security forces. The weird thing is, the United States military has not used them, but a lot of countries in the Middle East, parts of Asia, Vietnam especially, actually bought at least 2,000, I think, of these. So of SARs and ARMs, so that's actually saying something. Uh, now, why is it pretty much uh, needed to know about this? Well, the one major thing, the SAR has actually been used as a security guard gun in parts of Saudi Arabia, mostly in the Middle East. In fact, it's actually stated that during Operation Desert Storm or uh, when the Iraqi forces invaded Kuwait, it's actually stated that the Emir of Kuwait at the time had actually his bodyguards, instead of using like an AK-47 or whatever, they were actually using an SAR Galil. And the fact is, it was so greatly proven a very great gun, especially for carbine use, they wanted them for security guard units. And the fact is, they were. In fact, it's even stated that uh, Colonel Gaddafi of Libya, I think it was, actually had his bodyguard 
have SAR guns. So, yeah, in other words, this is actually freaking hilarious as hell. It's not the AK-74U, it's not the Uzi or whatever, that was actually highly used as a bodyguard gun. It was actually the SAR Galil. Now, I want to find it, I find this extremely funny because one, there is more than a few countries that actually use these guns. And the fact is, the Israeli Military National Guard or uh, the uh, Royal Gu the Guard of the said Tomb of Soldiers or whatever, or parade type units, they actually use this gun for marching use or such like that because of the high honor it got during the war. Now, sadly though, they don't longer make these guns because one, this was a rare find, so I'm glad I found it when I did. Because one, these are not easy to find. Now, there is one major thing that I do want to put out here is the weirdness on how many people don't actually know anything about these guns. Uh, now, you'll see me soon take apart the internal parts about this gun, and you'll see why this looks like an AK. But, weird thing is, majority of you, when people see this gun, they think it's an AK-47. It is not! It is not a high-tech AK-47. It is a Galil, dang it. In fact, the only video game I've ever seen it in, mostly, would be Black Ops. And the only film I'm known to see it ever being used, majority in combat or whatever, would be in the movie Heist. Uh, which is hilariously weird, to say the least. Now, uh, people would automatically ask me, uh, Tim what rounds do you fire out of this? Well, I fire 5.56 NATO out of this one. Uh, but in such, I did see that there was one version of a 7.62. Sadly, I wasn't able to get that one. Now, that would actually actually make it a little more badass. But what I do need to add to this is a carry handle device, uh, which is known to be used on an ARM. In fact, this is how you mainly know the difference between an ARM and an AR model Galil. It's one, the bipod, and the said carry handle. But for ARMs, it's just a bayonet lug. That's it. You don't have the carry handle. You don't have the bipod system. That's how it is. Now... Uh, many people would ask me, Tabor, could you actually add a scope on these? Yes, you could, but I don't want to do that ever on these guns, because one, I feel like it takes away the value. Now, because one, when I'm firing this thing, I feel like I'm a guy that's firing a light machine gun, rather than firing an assault rifle, which... This is why I actually love these guns, especially. Now, another thing you can also pretty much do is also fire it from the hip with the said buttstock folded. Me and my cousin actually did that. And we found it little problem with it. My cousin even went upward and tried to do the gangster idiocy that you see in movies. Uh, but I have to put this out here. Not that many guns show this bad boy. But maybe you all should see the components being taken apart, shall you? Alright y'all, now let's take apart this bad boy. What we must first do and make sure is the gun is unloaded. Make sure that's off. Okay, now what you gotta do is pretty much look like an AK-47. Gotta prop open the said top piece. As you see, it's just like an AK-47. The inside and components, just like an AK. So what we gotta do now, push forward the spring, like so. But this is the problem with just like an AK. Pull out the spring system. Now what we gotta do is pull back the hammer system. That of which, this is just like with an AK-47, as I said. Now, roll back the said slide. Pull back our barrel shroud. And here is our component here. Just like an AK-47, that's what they made it for. As we can see, it actually slides on the axis. So what we gotta do 
is pretty much twisted out. And there we go. Now, uh, you can easily also remove this, but I need a tool to get that out, so yeah. Uh, but as I said, these are pretty much the major components. And this is why these are such an easy build and easy manufacturing, just like an AK. Which, this is why Israel copied from it. So yeah, now what all we gotta do is pretty much take our bolt system and put it back in our gun. Find a certain area. There we go. Take our shroud. Easily and so, put it back on. Now, we put back our bolt system. Put it in a certain area so that way it locks in. And pretty much you can easily just push it forward. And then you put it back in your spring. Now we put on our said dust cover. But you gotta put it in a certain area, like there. And there we go. Back on, simple as that. And we're ready to go. Now as I showed y'all, that gun looked near identical as an AK-47. That's because they took it so much from an AK. And the funny thing is, I find about this gun is how badass it is and how much it's surpri surprisingly extremely better than an AK-47. Now I hear many people already saying, Oh, Timbor, uh, the AK-47 is better. No, not to me. I have fired AKs, and I'm not a big fan of an AK-47. I mean, the most modern AK, maybe, but AK-47s were a cheap quality firearm that which were just idiotic. Now, I'm going to put this out here. While firing this gun, I'm an extreme big fan of it. Especially when it comes to usage, it's history, it's motion and warfare. Now, as you all saw, or see me, you know, uh, pretty much moving with the gun and such, I have no problem. I have no problem firing this gun. It is extremely easy. It's one, I could easily just do this and boom. Or as well, the one major thing I do actually have to put out here, it's actually stated that hundreds of tank operators and as well, even uh, Israel Special Forces love this gun, especially also their paratroopers. Because one, they got a folding sock system, and also because of the fact it's surprisingly a little bit better to have a light machine gun slash assault rifle. So, Israel kind of kept these. I'm not kidding. Israel has actually kept this model and SAR models because for one major reason. They're the highly requested versions. And the weird thing is, you can see why. In fact, it's actually stated that this is actually a support, the one I have right now, as I said, is a support firearm. Uh, so in other words, this I would actually stay behind while I'm protecting my commander. I'm protecting my allies who are flanking the enemy. So what I'm doing is I'm just giving suppressing fire. Because what? Oh, you just feel the weight on this thing and it is surprisingly nothing. I do want to put that out here, though, is while firing this gun, you do feel the recoil because of the design. It's just like an AK-47. So what I might need to do is put a rubber uh, stop piece on my buttstock, because one, this, you feel the kick every time you pull the trigger, and it does hurt a little. So <laughs> I'm just lucky it's in 5.56, because this is, if this was in 7.62 NATO, my arm would be sore in the morning. Uh, now, one major thing I do also want to put out here is the following that the, that 
One, as I said, the uh, tank operators and such love it because one, you can easily have the said buttstock folded, which that's the thing. With the tank operators in Israel, they state they rather prefer the SAR rather than the Galil Ace. So that's saying something. Now, many people are automatically say, but similar, isn't the weight the problem? Not exactly. Because one, it seems to the fact that this gun, its only problem with it is its weight on the firearm itself, rather than the fact that the weight of the magazines like 5.56 NATO, uh, that's saying something. Because one, the, Ameri the United States had to get rid of our M14 and swap it out for the uh, 556 NATO M16 because they had to switch it out because one they could carry a lot more rounds which that's what they wanted problem is there was it, the gun may be light and such but I don't know why I I'm a fan of the old M16 the modern ones eh, but maybe I'll find find one one of these days and do a history review on them but maybe I should start with the Vietnam version rather than go up to the others but maybe you would ask, Templar, would you use this, especially if someone tried to break into your house? Most definitely, because one, I can actually have this hidden somewhere, like, since it has that buttstock, can be folded, what I can do is just hide it in some part of my house, like, say, like, right over here next to my shields without you seeing it. Like, let me see if I can put this over here. Like, one, right there. Boom. You don't see it. Y'all don't see it, do you? You don't see it? No? Good? Okay. <laughs> and I probably have this thing fully cocked already. And all I gotta do is pull off the safety and bang. That's what I love about this gun. Because the fact is, you can easily hide it. The enemy, your opponent can't see it where the hell it is. And the fact is, it's so easy to operate. This is why I love this gun. And the fact is, now people are... Uh, I, I already imagine hearing Brandon Herrera going, Ah, Templar, the AK-47 is better. Anything that Soviet made is a little bit better than that foreign knockoff. I think I can prove him wrong on that. Because one, although Brandon Herrera has him, even himself stated that a lot of AKs are sadly not, aren't as superior as people believe, and as well, you gotta pretty much get to a certain part. And the fact is, the AK-47 is just a cheap knockoff of the Strungerberg 44. This is a higher quality knockoff of a said AK-47, which I find hilarious as hell. Uh, but yeah, the only thing that the AK-47 took from the Strungerberg was its look. The Galil took the look from the AK and made it slightly better. Now, people automatically say, but Templar, this gun is a crude looking gun. It may look crude, but that's the way they make them. The fact is, that's why I kind of like the older Galils. This is still one of my, by far, one of my favorite guns from the Cold War. Now, there is a weird story about these guns being the fact that, uh, they were uh, later switched out for M16s or whatever. There is actually proven wrong about that. Because one, it's actually stated that Israel kept using this gun even long after <laughs> 1998. In fact, actually, during the early 2000s, uh, during the uh, Gulf War and such, we had to, uh, well, it's actually stated that the majority of these guns were actually used by Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and such to pretty much kick out the Iraqi forces. In fact, even Saddam Hussein's uh, military guard even used the SAR Galil. But as I said, this is the Galil ARM. Now, how many countries are still using this? A lot, from what I am told. They actually, I have actually heard that some countries have actually tried doing a copy off of this gun in order to make a different version of a salt or a type of light machine gun. I don't know what it is, but I've heard that it majority is coming from the Middle East. I don't know what it is. I, uh, I have only, I've only heard information about it. And apparently it's called the 
San Juan, uh, de Chagran or whatever. I don't, I, as I said, I don't know the name because one, there are various of names it's called. Sometimes it's called the Chagranan or the Gurligian. I don't know how or what, but apparently it's called the uh, uh, modern, the modern assault machine gun. And when I looked at an image of it, it looked as like a Galil, dang it. So, yeah. Although, I think they might have switched out potty parts. They probably, because one, instead of it being the folding stock, like we see, it is a fixed uh, polyextant type of butt stock. Kind of like the handle I'm holding right now. So, in other words, almost like plastic. Uh, but, other than that, you gotta admit, the Galil has its place in history, which I am deeply in love with this gun, and I hope you all are too. Anyways, guys, this has been Celtic Templar. Hope to see you all in the next one. Like and subscribe for more. If any of y'all have any information that I left out on this, in this video and such, please let me hear it from y'all down in the comments below. Also, y'all, if any of y'all want me to, uh, well, talk about a firearm and have it at at the shooting range and such, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Also, I'll be happy, more than happy, to get one of those firearms. Just make sure they are a good one, because, one, I don't want to get one of those idiot ones that explode in my face. Because, one, I am very scared about those. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, it's been Celtic Templar. Hope to see you all in the next one. Have a great day.